Hey guys, it's Mel Matt here for the making of It's All About The Riff. We're Pico Shea. How hey, you are, man? Good, mate, sir. I'm doing fantastic. Mm. I'm privileged and honoured to be here. You're privileged and honoured to be here. Yeah. How, how'd you get approached for this album? Mm. I don't know. Got that bribe in some, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, work, I work cheaper these days. The older I get, the cheaper I get. Cheaper, yeah. You know? So it goes. Sounds like the old pros up in the cross, you know. But, um, no, um, actually, Kingy was the one that sort of mentioned it. And um, obviously, Lake... Uh, Said, would you like to come and do it? And I said, I'd mm. love to, yeah. yeah. So, here we are. Good stuff. Now, what tracks are you playing on? I'm this doing, uh, this is Australia by Dan Kajin. Yep. And uh, Beds of Burning by Midnight All. Great. First songs itself, have they played a bit of influence on your um, music style? Obviously, obviously you know, Dan uh, Jane were a bit later in life, but as far as Midnight All, I can see, for sure. Mm. Uh, you know, like when I was cutting my teeth, you know, I thought they were one of the first bands I ever saw. Yeah. And obviously, you know, Rob Hurst, one of Australia's greats, of course. Um, yeah, so yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, they're pretty close to, to what I've done, and, you know, over the years, as, as what Rob plays, Rob, Rob Hurst plays, right? Yeah. You know, I, I think I'm pretty close to where you go, know, so. stuff. Now, um, you're playing a few bands at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a few. <laughs> call, call it smart or dumb, I don't know, I'm not sure, but yeah, I'll play a few. Yeah. Uh, and, and look, you know, that's the, the way the industry is, and I'm pretty much all of us know that to, to get regular work, you know, diverse and really good and play of course. any different bands as you get. So. That's it. Now, you mentioned that you're talking to Kingy uh, for the album. Yeah, 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 Mr. Stephen King. Uh, let's talk about Stand Alone, one of the projects that you. Yeah, that, that's, um, that's probably one of the main ones I'm doing as far as like an original thing. Yeah. Um, it's. Um, it sort of just came together. Um, King and was in another band with a guy called Chumwood, mm-hmm. so you know, they had a band called Club that they uh, disbanded. Well, not so much disbanded, but yeah. sort of stopped and changed a few members and things like that. And um, uh, King and I were just talking one day, and King said, "Mate, you want to do the original thing?" Mm-hmm. And I said, "Yeah, I'd love to," because it's been a long time since I've done the original. Thing, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so. Uh, that's, you know, as I say, it's probably about four gigs old. Yeah. Um, we've done, and it's just one of those things that, that just came together real quick, you know. It was from the very first night, mm-hmm. we realised we had something, you know, and, and uh, yeah. we've been labelled as Australia's biggest band, and yeah. then what, what they mean by big is no, no blokes short of the six foot three. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so it's a pretty, pretty big band, but yeah, it's a lot of fun, it's pretty brutal. Yeah. So it's sort of, I don't know what you call that, it's sort of, it's sort of boring like punk, but it's probably mm. just rock, beauty rock, I suppose. Okay. Are you guys working on an album at the moment? We've, we've just done some recording, we haven't finished it yet, but uh, there's just four or five tracks just to give everyone a taste, and we've been asked from uh, over the journey to put something together, so they can have a look at it. Excellent. Um, yeah, fingers crossed, you never know. You never, never know. know what the industry's like. It's a good market overseas. There is, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, King and I had a case of that with Brian Taddy, who does that. Uh, so yeah, it's quite a viable market if you get in there. So fingers crossed, we'll just see what happens. That's it. Do you have any highlights in your career? Oh, no, <laughs> maybe just one that might stand out the most. <laughs> well, I suppose. Well, speaking of tats, I mean, yeah. um, you know, again, another band that used to go and see them sneaking, you yeah. know, underage. Um, yeah, I suppose. We, it was a bit, well, it was 2005. Um, the original drummer, or not the original drummer. The, Paul Marco, he couldn't go, so I was the next cab off the ramp. So we did a few shows in Australia, and then we went over to uh, Europe, mainly Germany based, but um, England and Switzerland and all those sort of places. But uh, we did one show, and there's a, a band over in Germany, this sort of um, sort of cult underground sort of uh, Nazi band, mm. and um, they were calling the day, and they, they had two um, final shows. It was done outside in the speedway. There was 140,000 people. Fuck! Yeah, it was wild. It was. What? It was. Um. It was a kilometre long. It was actually just a, 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 an, old, an old speedway. Yeah. And they had three delay stacks. Yeah. So everyone could see them. Um, we're on. We're on the second day. Um. Over, over the course of the two days, they had you know all sorts of things like Slipknot and Motorhead and mm. blah 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 and. and they were fans of Rose Tattoo, so we got a wow. good as well. Um, yeah, that was just unbelievable. Fantastic. Yeah, it was incredible. 
How did you first get started playing drums? Like, what, what made you want to play drums? Well, funny enough, but not my whole family's not really musical. My dad used to play piano, and my mum used to used to sing. Mm. I like the radio. But um, my next door neighbour was probably responsible for really, because he was in the band, he was a drummer in the band. And, yeah. Um, I used to go on, when I was a kid, I used to go sit and watch him practice, and he actually gave me his first drum kit. Mm. So if it wasn't him, I don't know if I'd be doing this. You know, it's been a while, but uh, I've, I've stayed in contact with him over the years, but I haven't spoken to him for about 10 years, but he was pretty aware of what I'd done. And he was sort of happy, you know, that he had an influence in that and started me off. So yeah. I feel pretty lucky. Yeah. Sure. What music did you grow up listening to when you were younger? There, mate. You know, like most most of the normal stuff. You know, like obviously you couldn't have past those days. It was you know Zeppelin, mm. uh, Purple, of course, The Who, Stones, um, Beatles. You know, like you usually find that a lot of rock players don't really cross over too much. But yeah. I, I sort of did, you know, and um, you know, like cut my teeth on all that sort of stuff. You know, and obviously you know the likes of Easy. All those sort of things crept in as well. Quiet, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you a story, actually. A quick story. Yeah. I think it was one of the first concerts I went to. It was Dallas Quiet the Horn for Green. I think it was in 78, mm -hmm. something like that. So I was 18. I'm not giving away my age. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, it, and, and the, the support band was Kevin Boyd's Express. And I've never okay. seen him, and it, it was unbelievable. And, you know, uh, yeah, that was, that was wild. But, um, yeah, cut my teeth on all those sort of guys, and then obviously, you know, as a musician, you evolve and sort of diverse a bit. And then I started getting into, you know, other styles. And one of my, my favourite drummers was Jeff Ricardo. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, he was still like one of the groove masters, you know, so I learned a lot from him. Um, well, we got my own arse here, but one, Jason <laughs> McDonald, uh, a drummer, he, he labelled me as Australian as Jeff Ricardo, mm. which I. Yeah, I didn't go that far, but yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks, Jason. That's it. Is there any advice that you give out to the aspiring musicians? Mate, it was funny, you know, obviously these days it's a lot different and, and probably a lot harder than what probably it is. Obviously, there's not as many venues and there's, you know, less chances for, mm. for guys to cut their teeth and, and have a go. But, um, you know, really, you just got to, you know, keep it all you've got, believe in what you're doing. Um, Practice, practice, practice. Sure. Um, try and play with as many different musicians as you can because it's all a learning curve. You know, I'm over 50 now, I'm still learning. You know, I'm still still trying to play, you know, I've been lucky, you know. It's awesome. Yeah, if I die tomorrow, I'd die a happy man, you know, not that I plan on dying, but yeah, from what I've done, I feel quite, you know, lucky. You know. But yeah, just, just go to work at it, go hard, believe in what you're doing, um, and just practice. You know. Do you get much of a chance to hear the new bands that are coming out in the scene at the moment? I, I, I must admit, I, I, I sort of went off the radar a little bit and yeah. wasn't seeing much and wasn't listening to much, but um, getting back into it, yeah, I, I you know, like, well, I suppose they're old bands now, but like when Blue Fires first came out, yeah. wow, this is refreshing, you know, cool. Really cool. Um, you know, Corn, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, guys like that. Um, and you gave me like dream theaters and you know, all those sort of things. But, um, yeah, there's some good young bands out there. Um, you know, uh, I've got a girlfriend and she's 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 right into all sorts of different music and uh, she's introduced me to quite a lot of stuff, you know, like uh, Butterfly like that. Yeah. You know, but I've never really been acquaintance with them. Yeah, no, there's some good stuff out there. You know, it's, it's refreshing. Yeah. It really is. You know? sure. And I think, you know, for, for the industry the way it is, you know, where there's not a lot of room to play and there's not a lot of chances. I think for, for, for the time that we're in, for, for, the, for the industry that it is, I think, you know, it's doing quite well. I mean, especially with guys like Young Life over here doing what he's doing with his album. Yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah. All power to it. Yeah, That's man. it. That's it. Any final words that you give out to anyone out there at the moment? Any, any final words? Just uh, yeah, look, just enjoy life. Go hard, listen to as many different things as you can, and obviously make sure you buy this album. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Big O'Shea on the It's All About the Riff, making off. Thanks, Kat. Don't worry, it's anytime, man.